Uh, Russian propaganda trends influence Ukrainian society. I invite uh, our experts, Natalia Lehachova, founder and the head of the board of uh, civic organization uh, Telecritica. Volodymyr Paniot, Director General at uh, Kiev International Institute of Sociology, Diana Ducic, Executive Director at NGO Telecritica, and Roman Shutov, expert on monitoring Russian propaganda, Program Director of Telecritica. Morning, colleagues. It's a great pleasure to see you. And uh, those uh, who are not uh, celebrating yet, uh, the common many uh, holidays related to New Year. This time we have a very interesting uh, press conference because we will be happy to introduce results of a public opinion poll conducted uh, by Kmis Institute and it, it was um, requested by Telecritica and I will be happy to listen to Mr. Paniotto. Several words before I give the floor to my colleagues who will introduce our research. First of all, I would like to say Telecritica since March, monitors Russian propaganda in Russian media and also in pro-Russian propaganda in regional media in Ukraine. And uh, that monitoring gives us a lot food for judgment, for assessment. We know quite well that situation. And um, through the messages, they distributed also trends which we notice about the activity of Russian media as uh, to events related to events in the east of Ukraine and in Crimea. And we know the situation, how they help or not help Ukrainian regional, national, uh, regional mass media. I would like to say several words that despite all the challenges of this year, despite all the problems, there is a reason uh, for optimism Telecritica monitors are not only Russia propaganda, as you know, and news of all central TV channels and many regional channels. Uh, Telecritica participates in many civic initiatives. And we can say that in November, December 2013, a lot of what became reality was just a dream. In December, November last year, nobody could uh, believe that we would we would uh, have uh, public broadcasting or we would come uh, very close to it. That was uh, uh, a dream and many thought that many friends thought that uh, NGOs uh, should not participate in uh, legislation and development uh, around um, legislation uh, around as to uh, public broadcasting. But I believe that we have to achieve uh, whatever we can for that uh, something good to be uh, realized. A great uh, transformation is taking place as the Russian influence on our society. Even Vladimir Paniota will tell you that we notice that our society and media, they move away from total influence of Russian, uh, Russian products. We see that our TV channels uh, with difficulties, with bigger problems, and uh, it's clear that they have uh, nothing to fill on their air, but they refuse uh, the dominance of Russian uh, product. They're trying to, to produce their own products. There are negotiations on the national, international level, especially for public uh, broadcasting and then uh, European uh, broadcasters uh, to share their products with our TV channels. So I believe that now we can say the beginning of uh, withdrawal of Russian TV, Ukrainian mass media from total influence of Russian propaganda, Russian uh, messages from uh, when we were the secondary product as a to Russian. That age is coming to the end. We uh, enter the age uh, when we started to build our own uh, information uh, space. A lot of problems, a lot of issues, a lot of discussions and questions. How raw, uh, for example, how strong the state uh, should be here, how the, uh, the state should participate in regulating information under conditions of uh, the war with a huge state neighbor. There are a lot of opinions about that, but that's a subject of discussion. 
This is that paradigm which, uh, in which our information uh, media exist, and also, but we are united on one thing, despite all the contradictions between uh, uh, private uh, holders and oligarchs. We are united and uh, around the idea that we need to build a Ukrainian uh, broadcasting, uh, whether it's uh, Russian or in Ukraine. And we understand there should be a balance of state uh, influence and also of influence of civil society, NGOs, and media. Thank you. I give the floor to my colleagues and um, to Vladimir Panyo to help uh, provide results of so a very interesting poll, in my opinion. Then my colleagues will tell you about uh, those uh, results, very interesting results, all the results of Telecritica. Next slide, please. This is data from the previous uh, research, which shows uh, the balance of uh, trust and distrust uh, to Ukrainian and Russian TV channels. In red, those are uh, Ukrainian channels, and uh, in blue, that is uh, Russian. In the west, in the center, and in the south, trusted Ukrainian TV channels uh, dominates. But in the East, it's 50-50 without Donbass. And uh, in Donbass, a big dominance of Russian TV channels. Uh, that's, why, uh, that's why we wanted uh, to research the situation. And uh, the study was done from uh, December 5 to 14. And it, uh, it was a representative of Paul for Ukraine. But unfortunately, in Luhansk region, we we uh, interviewed only people who are on Ukrainian territory. We interviewed about uh, t around uh, 2,000 people, and uh, an error is uh, about around 2%, uh, approximately. This, whether Ukrainian media had influence or not. The question, the issue is here, it's not clear about time. That's why some uh, respondents uh, meant uh, victory of Maidan, but that's why the majority believes that Ukrainian media also had influence on pro-Russian moods in the East. And uh, the 42 percent told that uh, influence, told about the influence, and uh, the rest said no. And what media is it's uh, first of all news and talk shows, but to some extent uh, Russian Russian uh, serial movies and uh, what issue which is a problematic for us and nobody knows what is bad, uh, but when we ask people whether we should say all the truth, but also there should be something uh, uh, negative, or should we uh, hold a, a, a patriotic position, and uh, that uh, that's why we should uh, uh, not uh, broadcast an information that is not beneficial uh, for uh, Ukraine. People would like 82% would like uh, to have objective picture. They believe all the information. Uh, both positive and negative should be uh, given to them. Which information Russian uh, TV channels uh, spread? True, 66 percent believe that true. Partially, partially, partially uh, true and partially not true. 20 and uh, 71 percent believes that not true information they give. Do you support or not? Closing the Russian uh, channels that uh, have information programs. So Forty-one percent supports that idea, and uh, twenty-five percent don't know, and about one-third doesn't uh, support this idea. As to counter uh, counter propaganda channel. 50% support creation of such a channel, 12% don't support that, 
and uh, the rest believe they're not professional on this issue and they cannot tell you whether they support this idea or not. As to um, creation of the Ministry of uh, that will be responsible f uh, for control of information, there are a lot of those uh, who cannot say anything. Uh, it's more than one third, 35 percent. Uh, it is support the idea is supported by 37, and it is not supported by 22 percent. There is no alternative here to set up a ministry. That's why that support of the ministry, but not that ministry as uh, something that will uh, be responsible for propaganda. Here, I thought it would be the last uh, slide, but because uh, they spoke about uh, Russian series, series which uh, people watched uh, recently, 60% um, were not watch it, uh, watching anything. And uh, here's the, the list of serials uh, that more than 1% of uh, people watched. Internet, Kuchnia, Voronia, Sled, Minty, etc. And 14% were watching uh, some, something else, and 16% uh, were watching uh, something else, but they don't remember what. Thank you. Good morning. I will tell you about the results of the monitoring of Russian media that we conducted during a year and with the support of the News Network. And these results are quite, quite not, not very happy for us because for a year Russian, uh, in Russian media, Ukraine was uh, in a, as an enemy. And our experts uh, think that it will have a big negative uh, consequences in the relations of, uh, between two countries and also in the relation, uh, relations between uh, common people and uh, all the public opinion polls of the Vada Center in Russia. They show that Russian uh, public opinion is quite negative against Ukraine and Ukrainians. Of course, first of all, Russian state institutions did propaganda, and but not only. So uh, they in, uh, pulled in uh, private TV channels that belong to, that are financed uh, financed by Gazprom and uh, that are controlled by oligarchs, uh, supporters of Putin. And what we observed during the year, what were the trends? Intensity of Russian propaganda was uh, quite high during the whole year, but the biggest uh, peaks were. Uh, during some uh, uh, political periods, uh, during Maidan, for example, uh, during annexation of Crimea, and also during the beginning of uh, uh, military activities in the East uh, intensity, Russian uh, uh, propaganda started to decline in, six, in September. I will give you uh, concrete numbers how to measure it. For example, at the beginning of the year in March, his numbers, we take uh, VST program, on uh, Russian one uh, channel, 51, 54 minutes. Uh, that's uh, news. So, 45 minutes more about Ukraine. Of that, of those news so in one uh, part. If we compare VST on uh, TV channels uh, in uh, December, on December 22, for example. Again, all the news uh, lost uh, 54 uh, minutes, and then only 15 minutes are about Ukraine. Only three uh, uh, sports, and at the beginning of the year, there were 10, uh, uh, 10 stories from Ukraine. So you see, they reduced uh, air uh, dedicated to Ukraine. At the beginning of the year, it was uh, too big. Now it's reducing. Also, uh, the second say the same about uh, printed media, and uh, a good uh, sign is the Komsomolska Pravda, which was active um, speaker of Russian propaganda during all the year. And we can say that you know that newspapers are daily, and we can look at uh, what what uh, uh, topics uh, they had on the on the first step page at the beginning of the year in March. 19 of 30 
topics. Uh, they had uh, Ukraine as the major issue, and the majority of issues uh, won about Crimea. In July 13, 13 front pages were about Ukraine, and in the end of the year, it's uh, there is a decline. October, November, December, two, two first uh, pages a month are uh, about Ukraine. As to messages, main messages. That are present, that were broadcasted by Russian propaganda. They were changing also depending on events, uh, but there were several messages uh, that uh, were repeated uh, during the year. One of them is that Ukraine is not a state, Ukraine is a failed state, Ukraine is a country that uh, doesn't have the right uh, to exist uh, uh, in these uh, borders. And these uh, topics, uh, these themes, uh, they started to spread uh, last year. And then, with active uh, pol uh, political events and events on Maidan, they developed uh, those uh, topics uh, on all the media, and all the media. They, they supported the idea of a split of Ukraine, that uh, Ukraine cannot uh, exist in the, uh, in, this, in, the, in the current borders, etc. One more message and trend we observed in Russian media, demonization of of protesters on Maidan, and then after the, uh, the beginning of uh, military activities in the East, uh, demonization covered all Ukrainians, include and everything that is Ukrainian. And you know, words, uh, words uh, you, uh, Russian propaganda use like fascists and neo-Nazis, uh, headquarters, etc. And uh, until now, Russian media, they pay attention to Ukrainian uh, right forces and radical forces. Very often, we have news about right sector, about Svoboda, private sector, Svoboda, and Falun. It was about Leshko. And the stress is on some uh, radical steps of these political parties, of these political forces. One more trend. And uh, it was observed uh, during a uh, whole year after Renukovic fled away from Ukraine and uh, how to make uh, y Ukrainian authorities illegitimate. They were trying to reduce the legitimacy of Ukrainian uh, authorities, but they legalized the terrorist groups in the East. And uh, you know terminology, junta, and also chastise, uh, but in September these words started to disappear uh, from Russian TV channels slowly. So it's changing general approaches uh, to inform, a, inform a Ukraine pop, uh, Russian population, Russian uh, media. They, they, they started to speak more about their problems and uh, their issues. Legitimization uh, of terrorist groups and events in the East, and they were uh, through the uh, image of Novorossiya, and it's before a pseudo referendum, and after Russian media actually started to use uh, Donetsk, Donetsk, uh, Donetsk People's Republic and Lansk People's Republic, and also they used uh, such terminology as uh, pro protesters. And also, um, they quote the representatives of the terrorist groups. Uh, they call people's uh, governor, and these are f fresh uh, terminology, like Donetsk Army, and, and uh, police of DNR. And uh, also, they, they started to use uh, different um, characters in uh, information that played an important role in events in the East. Uh, was about Stroko Girkin when uh, they said to develop military activities in the East. Russian media always um, they um, showed uh, Stroko Girkin. He was in in many newspapers and uh, his comments. Were, he was uh, commented uh, uh, by Russian TV channels. But and, uh, again, after pseudo referendum and after Girkin left uh, from the east, uh, he started to dis disappear from uh, Russian uh, TV channels and disappeared from newspapers. 
one more trend, discreditation of the process of uh, presidential and parliamentary uh, elections. During presidential and parliamentary elections, Russian media always uh, emphasized that uh, these elections are impossible in the East because the situation is difficult and there and there are military activities there and also because of that uh, they doubted legitimacy, they question legitimacy of these uh, elections. After the president was elected and uh, for some time Russian media, they hesitated whether to consider him a legitimate uh, president or not. And they criticized uh, him and uh, there was a uh, legalization of future dictatorship. That was, uh, that was about inauguration of uh, Poroshenko. And the same about the parliamentary elections. So Russian media always, all the time, doubt uh, elections in the East and, and the rhetorics of war in that context is, is still there. Comes a more uh, newspaper just before the vote. Uh, Here's the headline, the Council of uh, Punishing Operation, uh, or the Parliament, the Parliament uh, for uh, Punishing Operations. Oh. And uh, they discredited elections in Ukraine. Russian media positively or neutrally spoke about elections, so-called uh, elections in LNR and DNR. Very brief last uh, trend, and in during these parliamentary elections, the Russian media started to, to actively support and uh, advertise oppositional oppositional bloc uh, in Ukraine, and criticize uh, uh, governor of Dnipropetrovsk, uh, uh, Kolomoisky. That's a very interesting point because the same we observed in some Ukrainian on Ukrainian TV channels on those like into Ukraine that belonged to Akhmet Vlevochkin. And about a big number of fake news in Russian media, I will not speak uh, separate because uh, that's a big separate, a separate uh, topic. And Roman will speak about uh, Russian influence in Ukrainian uh, information uh, dimension. And a little report is on our uh, site, Media Sapiens, and uh, also we send it uh, to all of you, our materials. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I will speak about uh, consequences of that uh, Russian propaganda in Ukraine, how that happened in Ukraine, and what, uh, what uh, have we to do with that. To continue, I can say that not only Russian uh, Russian media uh, spread propaganda in Ukraine. Unfortunately, before messages of Russian uh, propaganda, a lot, a big number, of, unfortunately, are Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian entities one world media one world. Unfortunately, we find propaganda in central media. For example. Monitoring Telecritica found them in uh, Vesti newspaper and uh, Vesti reporter and Vesti FM. Komsomolska uh, Pravda in Ukraine, and Fakta, uh, uh, 112 channel, and, and some others. Local media, they were actively involved in uh, spreading propaganda in winter, spring, in the east and in the south when local elites were not able uh, to this side from where wind was blown. And the majority of media were like uh, quite a flexible um, position and uh, they were trying to call those militants uh, or terrorists as uh, Russian speaking uh, citizens, but uh, they had to, to, to decide and local mass media. Now they keep a track of that and uh, they don't support uh, Russian uh, propaganda discourse and uh, except several Odessa media. A reporter, Atkat, and some others. To spread Russian propaganda, political parties were involved in that, like Communist Party of Ukraine, PSPU, they, were, uh, they, uh, they uh, promote um, propaganda disc and oppositional uh, blog that was mentioned by Diana. In the spring and in the beginning of the summer, uh, all the local authorities were involved in propaganda, like statements of Luhansk uh, Regional Council and Donetsk Regional Council, fake information and um, 
cause of violence uh, that was in the social media uh, media and then newly created uh, separate uh, terroristic media started to, to use that. Telecritica monitored uh, Russian propaganda during uh, the whole year and we can say yes, no doubt that uh, that's about not uh, like it's just a coincidence or chaotic information process. We can speak about a planned, well calculated plan, which is done, which is done in Ukraine by Russian media and also Ukrainian institutions that supported them. About some tasks of Russian propaganda, Diana spoke about that, and I will just underline that sequence that in winter. The key task of Russian propaganda was uh, to put to put tax on Maidan and all the processes on Maidan, and then uh, to deceive the society about the events and how that is called uh, as uh, people uh, were called uh, terrorists, fascists, etc., etc., animals, etc. Then, when uh, the authorities are ch uh, changed in Kiev, then they started. A new phase started. They started to develop uh, the image of uh, and Kiev and Ukraine is. Uh, um, the enemies uh, they uh, uh, support Americans, uh, and uh, so they were using those uh, separatist moods in some regions. And also in May, we can say about open uh, open calls uh, to uh, violence and to kill um, the demand of Ukrainian blood. That was very cynical, especially through uh, social network and Russian media. And um, since uh, the summer, they started to legitimize uh, those uh, so-called countries and uh, terrorists uh, that are under terrorists. And uh, until now, that uh, Russian propaganda had two goals. It promoted actively all this time to underline that Kiev is, uh, it's because of Kiev we have this uh, this conflict. And uh, the second point, and. Uh, how to undermine uh, the uh, the rear? How spread information? How to stabilize the situation? In uh, like myths about bay, uh, bad IDPs and about uh, those uh, demonstration of our mil military men who don't want to fight and they are demoralized. And um, now, by the way, a new stage begins uh, like a steady hysteria because of us. Uh, uh, powers, which are, et cetera, et cetera. Russian propaganda, it's difficult to say uh, what they used all dirty uh, tricks, all the most, uh, all the spectrum of all uh, dirty open lies in uh, playing scenes and hysteria and um, calls uh, to violence and uh, they pressed on uh, emotions of people, they manipulated with images of uh, women, children, we all re remember crucified uh, babies and other fakes said they were because they were they wanted uh, to uh, press on emotions you know um, in human center to to push the uh, people to uh, conclusions uh, with, the, with that background Ukraine looked lost uh, lost uh, unprotected and there was no clear vision of this in the government and also in NGOs uh, how to uh, act against that fine and in the end of the year we don't have still the state doesn't have it that vision and uh, there's no uh, position in mass media and uh, NGOs work uh, on uh, showing uh, fake fakes tell us what to do with it we only said uh, And we initiated a dialogue how we can uh, organize our efforts, how to develop a common approach for us uh, to uh, protect, uh, protect ourselves against uh, propaganda. The first steps for Ukrainian media, uh, it's important to, to be honest. If you blame Russians that they uh, distort reality, you should uh, say the truth. You saw those numbers. Uh, that 80% of Ukrainian citizens are ready to hear uh, the truth in media. And uh, 
It's not a threat for security or anything. The citizens are ready. Ukrainian media lost a lot of audience at the beginning of the conflict in the east when they started to lie about events in Donbass. Local people saw that mass media was saying no truth. And they don't, don't, don't want, are not interested in them. So for journalists, uh, we need to be honest and we, need, uh, we must not lie to us. So we, have, we must build contacts with those people with whom we lost. Those people who are under uh, occupation in Donbass and Crimea or live near uh, the front. Unfortunately, we, we speak a lot about uh, them and uh, not for them. And we don't give them information they need. And uh, that must be uh, the first step for those people to return to our information uh, territory. And also we need to uh, explain uh, steps of Ukrainian government and Kiev, because uh, there are decisive and uh, steps and uh, we have to take, but uh, they will be negatively interpreted by people who live in the East. And the fourth point. What I told you, maximum number of uh, journalists and mass media and national local, they should participate in the development of products and, uh, that uh, can work against uh, propaganda, and uh, which could say the truth uh, to people uh, about. And that should be done together, agreed, in, uh, and for long. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Do you have a question? I have a question to Diana. You made a very interesting study how uh, tonality of Russian media was changing. How can you, can you explain that? 45 minutes and now 13 minutes. Do you have an explanation of that? Because that's a very interesting fact. Maybe it's an index of some political processes in Russia. It will be my subjective opinion. It uh, shows uh, um, political processes in Russia, and I believe that that is related uh, to the fact that Russian authorities and the government uh, had to explain to the population what was happening in Crimea and then what was happening in the East. And uh, it's clear that for people to believe to uh, Russian government, one, one program wouldn't be enough. That's why there was a lot of propaganda. It seems uh, to me that uh, Russian government became a victim, a hostage of that uh, fake information territory. Because in the end of uh, the year, they have lots of uh, problems, and uh, they are trying to get rid of that of Ukrainian story that was dominating during the, but it's very difficult for them to do that because uh, a public opinion is tuned to that now. And the government, is it, if it changes uh, this position quickly, they will uh, lose their rating. And that's clear. That's why they do it uh, gradually. We see that and uh, they gradually reduce. But that doesn't mean that everything can change because uh, Putin and you and his position are, no, are not predictable. And we know the position of Russia later about the East. We don't know until the end. And that's how you cannot get, say that this uh, propaganda will not be, will not have a new wave in Russian media. in what, how to deliver information, patriotically or objectively. It's a question to all the speakers. We asked about that uh, from people. And uh, Volodymyr made a presentation, and it shows that 82% of people believe that Ukrainian media should say the truth. It doesn't matter how bad it is. We support this, this dominating part of the population because we're sure that Ukrainian media should not be uh, propaganda. If we uh, turn into propaganda, we, uh, people will not trust us. And this uh, I can add because I speak m to my colleagues who come, to, who go to the Nets, go walk there, and they say the following. If they see that Ukrainian media do not reflect their problems, 
they have li li liberated or occupied the territories. They uh, they don't trust Ukrainian media. They stop trusting. We see that. The truth is truth. If people see and hear the truth, they may maybe they will not trust the Ukrainian government. They may not trust uh, some representatives of, of political parties. They will not stop trusting Ukrainian civil society and media. And that's more important. Another thing, as always in any country, especially during the war, there should be a balance. Criticism should not be just for the sake of criticism. It's not uh, for your political uh, force uh, to get uh, some bonuses. And that's what we observe in some TV channels. But for our state, for our country, our society to get united in the fight uh, for reforms, uh, for reforms um, for the sake of which uh, Maidan started and also uh, against, we should unite against uh, external aggression, foreign aggression. Chernomorsk TV radio company, what would you advise uh, to people in uh, occupied uh, Crimea? How they can watch news? What news? Because there is no Ukrainian. S just a couple of words. I believe that uh, they will watch in Crimea, they will watch uh, Russian TV because uh, that's an easy uh, access. What Ukrainian uh, government must do? They should try for Ukrainian discourse to be uh, to be there in different ways, including those uh, that are uh, suggested by Yuri States, the head of the not not created, and I hope it will not be created, the Ministry on Information Policy, internet, uh, satellite broadcasting. And on occupied territories of Donbass, uh, there should be a signal, better signal uh, from uh, antennas. Ukraine's government should understand the more active they promote the information products, including Crimea. The sooner residents of Crimea will realize, in my opinion, that mistake they committed. Those who really voted, of course, there must be a number of uh, political events that must uh, take place. But it's not only about Crimea. The task of the government is uh, to give as much as possible of true information, and for that information to uh, reach all, all the places in the world. And uh, I don't understand why we always say that we need to create, create uh, Broadcast in a foreign language, but we need to strengthen what we have, and we could add some uh, BTB, for example, with the uh, uh, the first uh, Persia Ukraine, and, and instead of that, we create a ministry, a, a structure of uh, civil service, uh, just uh, to strengthen those uh, productions that exist and uh, add in only new capacity. So. That's about broadcasting in Crimea. Thank you. Next question, please. No questions. No? That is a question. How Russia, Russia covers uh, their problems? And Ukrainian. Like when uh, Rinya and Ruble are uh, fallen. Of course, Ukrainian issues in Russia, Russia blows them, turns them into something very big. And uh, they focus, uh, they say that everything is bad, we have a crisis, we have econo economic color collapse. We assume that we have energy crisis, a lot, a lot of attention paid to that issue in the cost, uh, context of uh, coal supplies. It's about Ukraine. And uh, those uh, topics that Russia, their own, they speak about their own uh, problems, but uh, they uh, reduce uh, the importance of some issues. One more trend that uh, Americans uh, blamed in everything. If at the beginning of the year, the central uh, enemy, Ukraine was the main enemy, now 
the US so they're trying to show one more enemy on their news channels thank you there are some people in Donbass and Luhansk who don't believe any media how to work with that audience people who lost uh, trust uh, in everything how to influence them how to work with them how to reach them for them to believe thank you very good question our position is media should work with those people like with all the people they should be uh, they should satisfy the information interest they should know how to live there is no power no water no, no sewage how to make their life uh, secure how to uh, treat children how to get uh, assistance how to contact with ukraine etc about all of that we should tell them about all of that we should not discuss uh, we we shouldn't discuss how bad their life is no we should develop their pro protocol be uh, attractive interesting and useful for them they are looking for that productive our media will speak about it they will watch our media not to find out that ukrainians are good or bad or russians but to get that information they need uh, for their life zik channel Recently, they speak started to speak about the creation of a counter propaganda state uh, channel. This makes sense uh, to to set it up because for us uh, people who have uh, pro completely pro Ukrainian position, we know from the work that is a counter propaganda. We know that is uh, not true because people who will watch it, they will know about that too. They will be very negative to that. They will understand that this is a counter-propaganda. Is it not uh, populism? Is it not uh, waste of money that could be used uh, better? A couple of words about this. Uh, I don't understand uh, which uh, channel you are talking about because you speak, you probably speak about, um, you mean discussions uh, that uh, we need a propaganda channel. Telecritic, our position is clear. We cannot speak in general about any propaganda or counter propaganda inside of the country. That's excluded. But we, we can speak about uh, good, correct uh, counter propaganda which is not built on, on manipulation but on true information outside of Ukraine. What do I mean? Systems uh, exist for long. Voice of America, it's that's counter propaganda abroad. But Voice of America doesn't have the right uh, to broadcast in, uh, in the US. BBC International, it's uh, propaganda of the way of life, or Western way of life, or is it counter propaganda to bad influence? and trends and processes but it should not be built uh, should not be built on uh, dirty techniques and they should be built on uh, true information about ukraine so they should not lie must not lie we should un they should underline those advantages ukraine has they should tell about problems in ukraine but they should uh, say how these problems can be solved uh, they should uh, show ukraine through the prism of uh, civic society, activists of civic society, criticize uh, the gun. Why not? Uh, counter propaganda, propaganda can have elements of criticism. In West America, they have a program for Ukraine. You can hear different opinions about the government. So while built, correctly built broadcasting can it be exist and must exist but it should be outside of Ukraine for broadcasting uh, in the world. Thank you very much.